Have you tried creating intro and outro animations using anim curves with that mirror checkbox and found that it doesn't work the way you thought it would? Well, there is a way you can do intro and outro animations with anim curves, so let's take a look. How's it going, everybody? When I first started working with anim curves, I thought, this is great. There's a mirror checkbox. So if I just want to create my intro animation on a certain element or a group of elements in a composition, and then I want to animate those out at the end, I can just check that mirror checkbox and it will do all the work for me. But I immediately found out that that's not the case. And if you saw my first video in this series, I created a preset and that preset helps you visualize exactly what happens by changing these different settings. You can download that macro to play around with these settings and visualize what's going on here. Just jump over to the buy me a coffee page and grab that free of charge or throw me a coffee if you want to. So we're just doing a simple animation here where we're moving a box from the left side of the screen to the middle of the screen. I'll play through that now just to see what we ended up with. I have set the ease out curve to elastic so that gives us that sort of bounce effect once this comes into the screen. If we wanted to recreate this as an outro animation, of course the first thing I tried was checking the mirror check box. Now our animation is going twice as fast as it was before and it's fully executing well before the end of the composition. By the way, let me stop just a second and say thanks so much for stopping to check out this video. My name is Ron Chanal and my goal here on this channel is to help you become a better video editor and motion graphics creator by providing tips, techniques, tools, and assets all related to DaVinci Resolve. So if that's the kind of content you want, please be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and enable all notifications so you'll be alerted whenever I post a new video. Let's get back to the anim curves. So what happens when that mirror checkbox is checked is the anim curve takes whatever time scale you have specified, divides it in half, executes the animation that you've set up across the first half of that time scale and then reverses the animation on the second half of that time scale. So in this example, we have set our square to animate from the left to the right and start at 0.5 seconds in to the duration of the clip and then fully animate across one second. So by 1.5 seconds in, our animation has fully executed. So let's uncheck the mirror checkbox and review how we have our intro animation set up. Because of the time offset, our animation does not even begin until half a second in. And because of the time scale that we have set up, our animation executes within one second of when it starts. By 1.5 seconds in to our animation, we have fully executed everything. So how do you go about setting your outro animation using an anim curve? The easiest technique i found is to use one node for your intro animation and then a separate node for your outro animation. So in this case, I'm using a transform node for the intro animation. To apply this technique, I would create a second transform node to control the outro and you could either duplicate your current transform node and then make changes to it or start from scratch with a brand new transform node and add your anim curves and set up all your animations that way. I'm going to start by creating a new transform node from scratch that doesn't have any modifiers attached to it. And if you remember from the first video, we can't directly attach an anim curve modifier to a center attribute or anything that requires two inputs, an X and a Y position, because an anim curve only generates one output. So therefore it can apply X and Y attributes at the same time. But the easy workaround for that is to first apply an XY path modifier to the center and then go to that and turn off the keyframes that are created by default. And then we can go into just our X path, right click, modify with anim curves. And then we have the ability to specify all the different settings for just the X path or the Y path or whatever attribute you're animating. We're gonna set our source to duration. And I won't get into the details on this in this video, but in the previous video, I covered the differences in the source values for working with anim curves. And we'll set our curve to easing. And and let's just say we're gonna stick with the Expo ease out curve. We know we want our outro animation to go in the opposite direction as our intro animation. Start by checking the invert box. And then let's just play through that and see what that gives us as a starting point. You can see we don't get anything that's really resembles what we started out with because what's happening right now is that we have two different transform nodes with anim curve settings applied to it. It probably makes sense now to adjust our time scale so that we can have the outro animation start when we want it to start and execute at the speed we want it to execute at. If we wanted that animation to start at frame 50, that was 50 divided by 72, which is 0.694. So we want our time offset to be 0.6. 
So we're still getting some kind of weird results. We know we want our animation to execute faster. Let's go ahead and speed that up to maybe a time scale of six so that it executes within a half a second. So again, we're closer, but now we just need to dial in our scale so that we can get it right where we want it to be. If you remember in our intro animation, we have it set up so that it starts with the square off the screen with a scale offset of minus 0.1 and then takes the square to the middle of the screen, which ends up being a scale of 0.6 because the scale offset is added to the scale and we want it to end up halfway across the screen, which is 0.5. So if we set those same values up here, a scale of 0.6 and an offset of minus 0.1, we have now recreated that outro animation by starting with a brand new node and adding an anim curve to it and creating that outro animation from scratch. So now let's take a look at the other way to do this, which would be copying the existing transform node and making changes to it. So I'll start by deleting out the transform node that we added before. Click on our existing transform node, copy it and paste it without making any changes. Let's see what we get. So again, we have a similar situation to what we had before, where now we have two sets of anim curves being applied to the same attribute. These anim curves are overlapping, they're being interpreted and combined together, and it's producing an effect that we may not expect, but we just have to dial this in to get it to work the way we want it to work. So the first thing we could do to start sorting this out on our second transform node or whatever node you're working in, go to the anim curve for whatever attribute you're animating, the one you've copied over, and just check the invert box. You can see nothing apparent happens or what happens is everything disappeared. Because of the timing and the position, we're not able to see what's happening there. The next thing we could do to make an adjustment to this is to work with our timing so that the outro animation starts to happen when we think it should happen. So if you remember, our intro animation is fully executed within 1.5 seconds. So let's say we want our outro animation to start happening at two seconds. We could change our time offset to accomplish that. And again, it's a 72 frame composition. So if we want our outro animation to start two seconds into that, we can do the quick math on that. 48 frames divided by 72 frames gives us 0.67. So if we change our time offset to 0.67, we're getting closer. Our intro animation is executing as expected and our outro animation is happening, but the timing seems like it's just a little bit off. And if we take a look at this frame by frame, we can see that this curve is actually executing in the time that we think it is, but because of the shape of that curve, the bounce animation is happening outside of the frame. So one thing that we could do in this case is to change our curve on the outro animation. So again, I'm on our second transform node where we've changed things up to work on our outro animation. So instead of using the elastic curve, I may change this to expo and let's play through that and see what that gives us. So now our intro animation executes and then the square exits to the left. So I hope that gives you a better understanding of how to create both an intro and an outro animation using anim curves without using that mirror checkbox, which doesn't really work work the way you might think it would in most cases. And don't forget that in the third video in this anim curve series, I'm going to cover the differences in using anim curves with no keyframes compared to using traditional keyframes in a keyframe stretcher when you want to change the duration of your clip and how your animation scaling is affected with each one of those different use cases. And don't forget, you can download that macro to play around with these settings and visualize what's going on here. Just jump over to the Buy Me A Coffee page and grab that free of charge or throw me a coffee if you want to. If there's anything more you'd like to see covered related to intro and outro animations for anim curves or any other editing topics in general, drop in a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear from you and get your input. And I'm sure the rest of the community benefits from that input as well. And if you found this video informational or useful, please do hit that thumbs up button and share it with your friends. That means a lot to me and it helps the channel out as well. And if you're new here, please do consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell and enabling all notifications so you'll be alerted whenever I post a new video. Thanks so much for watching. Have fun creating and editing. I'll see you next time.